seems recording. Okay, so again, hello everyone. I see that there are relatively very less number of participants today. What I want to inform you is that today is a very, very interesting lecture, uh, something which I've been looking up to since we started um, this course. Um, because as we discussed in the beginning, so we revamped this course, we revised a lot of curriculum in this course um, to include these um, actual case studies and simulations um, in this course of numerical simulation. And what we want to do today is um, start with the case study of a flat ruling. Um, in the last week, what we did was we studied um, the we studied the so if I will go to this slide here so what we did was um, in the last week we studied this modeling of the ruling process um, we connected this with the previous knowledge of fundamentals of plastic deformation and um, then we uh, went on to explore different um, models, ideas, methodologies, uh, different formulas with which we can analytically, analytically calculate and model things. Um, and what we did, uh, what we want to do today is basically add, ah, this, this is annoying, just, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, sorry, um, my, my colleague's phone was ringing and it was annoying, but yeah, okay. So in the last lecture, what we studied was we uh, studied the modeling of the ruling process. We saw some of the analytical functions and formulas to calculate uh, some, a uh, few things. Or I also shared a um, uh, uh, worksheet with you in which all the formulas were embedded and you were able to change a few things and calculate the friction coefficients required and so on and so on but yeah it was just a glimpse so uh, what I would like to ask now is were you able to um, follow up with the worksheet and were you able to effectively use it because what we will do in um, today's lecture will be um, to um, use that knowledge, use that worksheet and build on that. Um, but that was a very simple, easy case of uh, 2D flat ruling. Today we will add a little bit more to it using finite element simulations. Okay, so most of the students say yes, that's great. It's good to know. And um, now today what we will do is we will... Um, uh, yeah. So what we will do today is we will uh, talk about case study of flat rolling simulation, a practical training. And a practical training is basically, we will not be going to the lab, but rather we will be doing a practical training on um, a simulation tool. Hmm? So that's what we will be doing today. Um, the learning objectives for today's lecture are brief revision of the previous analytical model for the ruling process. Some of it we have done, some of it we will see in quickly in the slides. Um, definition of a case study for flat ruling um, simulation. We will define a specific problem which we would want to solve and then we will um, model it, uh, run some simulations on a Becker's environment. I will share a few delicate details with you. The problem is, we will we don't have enough time today 
we want to cover a lot but we don't have enough time so i will try to quickly give you a glimpse or a gist of what abacus looks like how do we define different things and then uh, model it and run a simulation and how we see the results and so on so you will just uh, get an assert some idea about the environment of course i will not cover everything uh, and then um, we will come back to the slides and we will talk about further analysis of how different parameters affect the ruling process outcomes. So then we will see what are the different effects. We will compare the results with our previous knowledge, with some of the charts and graphs that other people have given in the books or you already know about. Or we will compare them with our common instinct or knowledge, what we have. And then again, I will introduce Simulation Club to you today because now it, it will make more sense. And then if you will have any further questions, I will be happy to answer them. So that's the overall uh, overview of our today's lecture. So let's get um, started. When we want to talk about the ruling process, the modeling of the ruling process, we can use several different modeling approaches um, to model it. Um, for example, we can do empirical modeling, which is based on um, which is based on the experimental data which we get. So we actually do ruling and then collect data, and based on that we make hypotheses and generalization and assumptions and we fit our model according to that and then we get our results we can also do analytical modeling which is something which we studied in the last lecture so we use geometric principles and trigonometry and then basic um, uh, mechanical and material flow rules to calculate the amount of strain or stress or um, and, and different processes like this and then there are relatively more complicated theories as we discussed the last time that when we want to reduce the number of um, assumptions and we want to increase increase the accuracy of our model then there are different um, approaches for example viscoplastic approach then there is error compensation method for approximate solutions uh, finite difference method hydrodynamic rolling theory um, glide line theory elemental theory and then barrier sentences um, so then there can be different approaches and today we will focus on finite element modeling of the rolling process so that's what we will do and um, in the in the basic theory what we need or what we do is we um, want to have some basic assumptions on uh, for example, uh, plane strain state if it is 2D case or if there is um, a certain amount of friction or if there is contact restrictions or so and so about the surface features and several things. And um, then we also want to take uh, into account the friction and how do we uh, define that. We want to uh, define the flow criteria, which ones do we use, the geometry of the model, how do we define the geometry of the ruler and of the billet, and then how do we actually calculate the um, uh, ru ruling process by using uh, model from which scientist so these are basically the basic elements we require so the basic assumptions friction flow criteria geometry and and then some um, modeling methodology you're already familiar with uh, this um, previous schematics of ruling where we have two roles and um, what we want to do is we want to develop this ruling methodology we already discussed how uh, what is the material velocity in the trailing end and what is the material velocity in the leading end uh, how do rollers roll and what are the assumptions we take here and so on and so on so you're already familiar with it and um, and the last time what we discussed was we discussed the velocities we discussed the friction coefficient um, and the backward slip and the forward slip the, the total strain in the material um, and what we avoided was basically the discussion of these um, rolling forces which are required um, for a successful uh, rolling process to take place. And um, that's something which we will um, do today. And um, from several models and formulas, it is relatively tricky. So first you have to know the cross-sectional area. So first you have to know the cross-sectional area. Can you hear me? Because I have stopped hearing myself. 
so if you can hear me please vote yes okay super super because this just turned off um uh, okay so what we um do is um we need a cross-sectional area and for the area last time for the, from the analytical model it is relatively difficult to um, calculate the change in strip width during rolling and there are different models and methodologies for that but if we know the cross-sectional area then we can relatively calculate force um, and these are some of the graphs which um, just give the net outcome of what we will get from these calculations so this is uh, the graph oh so 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 this is the graph for normal stress and if I take for example the roller is rolling like this and there is a sheet in the middle like this so this is our sheet in the middle then the normal stress is basically stress in this vertical direction okay or I can change the or I can change the color let me draw that again so if we have two rollers then the normal stress will be stress in the sheet in the vertical direction whereas uh, the longitudinal stress will be stress in the sheet in this direction and you can now as see that on on the surface the sheet will follow this path whereas in the middle it will follow this path and then it will change and therefore you see different lines here where the top line is basically close to the roller surface and this line is basically in the middle or towards the middle of the roller so here and the normal stress is basically this and you can see that it is divided in different sections so we are looking at data from this part to this part so how this stress is changing and similarly for the normal stress from this end to this end how this stress is different here different here different here different here and then you will see let me change the color again then you will see these two peaks here so these peaks mark the um, the um, no slip point which we discussed so no slip point which we discussed last time why that is important because there is no slip happening before that it is backward slip and after that point it is forward slip and so on and so on and then here you can also see um, the the strain distribution and we see that from this point to the end the strain is constantly increasing but it is not linear um, after a certain point um, so it is linear to a certain extent and after that it is quadratic and eventually it will become straight because after this point there will be no uh, strain further strain possible in the material so these are generally the overall trends which we get from our analytical models or from our other models which we use to run simulations and then uh, and then these are the um, empirical results for different other values for example the force so how this force is so how the force during rolling is constantly increasing and once it reaches a certain value where the full rolling has taken place then the force drops and on the other side oh, how did this come and then on the other side the uh, empirically related forming uh, resistance so the resistance of forming this is something which which has been discussed before so the resistance for forming is minimum 
least for a specific area ratio and then it constantly increases again so we have to find the sweet spot where the resistance ruling is minimum so we can quickly deform our material into a design shape okay so far so good so what we have studied until now is um, this uh, so what we have discussed until now is basically some of the uh, analytical or empirical results of um, uh, normal or, or longitudinal stresses strains and forces and uh, uh, resistance to deformation and how they look like so we will be able to identify them when we will actually do our simulations so what we are doing here is we are just basically covering the previous knowledge what we already had now this is the problem which we want to define and it is important to understand it here um, what I want you to do is uh, while I am delivering this lecture on a side if it is possible uh, without interrupting this lecture if you can open up that Excel worksheet which we already um, have from the previous lecture and what I want you to do is I want you to um, give this information uh, as input so we are using three different roller radii 20 millimeter 40 millimeter and 60 millimeter and now just understand that these are roller radius these are not roller diameters there if you want to input diameters then you have to multiply these values by two and then input it there so these are the roller radii which means these are um, these R's so the, the two rollers are symmetric and we are using three different roller radii here and then the reduction ratios which we are using are three different reduction ratios 15% 30% and 50% which means that if the billet height initially is let's say 10 millimeters uh, for 50% reduction it will be out as five millimeters for 30 percent reduction it will be out as seven millimeters and for 15 percent reduction it will be out as i think 8.5 millimeters okay so from this kind of um, um, model you can give all these values individually as an input and then you can find out the necessary friction coefficient which is required to successfully run this simulation so that is something which you can do on the side while we are working on this but here what we are doing is we are three, taking three different roller radii and then we are taking three different uh, reduction ratios and we are looking at the effect of how the ruling process is affected and what we want to do is we want to focus on this area here in the middle this area which you can see and what we want to do is we want to see how the stresses and strains and forces and everything evolves when this material passes through this roll gap and is rolled into a sheet that's what we want to do today but we will not model it so we will not write equations for that but we will use a finite element tool to do all these simulations and run these things and see the results um, yeah and then what we are doing is we are using copper as a material because it is relatively softer it is more ductile uh, we can deform it to much higher extents um, it has a relatively higher density it is also a practical material which is uh, rolled into sheets and strips and wires quite a lot so we use this as a case study um, we took data from um, literature and we use this as an input um, data for our um, uh, simulation case in this and what we do is basically we can uh, we can we will also see it in um, um, abacus uh, just a few minutes later that what we can do is we can um, um, define the density of the material uh, we can also define the elasticity of the material with the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio and then what we do is mm -hmm,
and then what we do is we also define the plasticity of the material by using the plastic data where we define yield stress and plastic strain uh, and this is the data which we took from uh, literature and defined it in the uh, simulation tool so now the so now basically the simulation model knows about our material uh, flow behavior our materials elastic behavior our materials density so it can do better and more appropriate calculations and then there is a methodology in abacus where we define a section we, and then we assign it as a homogeneous section to the material so it is solid homogeneous section which means that its properties in all directions are same uh, for metals it is usually a case uh, the metals usually follow this case but there are some other materials which usually do not also follow this case so there is also a possibility to, to define and model those materials but we are not talking about them right now so yeah, and then um, uh, probably Dr. Irani would have discussed this in um, in his lectures uh, that um, when we use finite element models, we um, divide our geometry in different small subsections, and we call those subsections as we call this um, uh, we call this uh, division of a bigger chunk of material into smaller sections meshing, and then where each uh, block here is called an element and all the corners of this element are called nodes and then our simulation results are depending on this uh, quality of mesh just a quick question so do you have you already studied this before so meshing and elements and nodes and they have an effect on the outcome or something so you just have a basic idea about this um, i when we are discussing the fundamentals of finite element model this is a very basic fundamental so whenever we talk about finite element modeling we always talk about the finite element which comes in so it the, the model can be divided in small several kinds of finite elements um, and this process is called meshing so you would have uh, so if not then just go back to the previous lecture study more or just use uh, help of the uh, books or documents which you have already um, which have already been shared with you but do get information about that okay so just um, 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 uh, just rephrasing uh, or just uh, revising that uh, the the type of mesh which we use does have an effect on the outcome and uh, now understand that the finer the mesh here you see that the mesh is super fine uh, let me use a laser pointer so here in this figure um, you will see that the mesh is super fine so the size of the mesh is 0.3 millimeter square and this would always yield better results the issue with this kind of mesh is that um, these are just too many equations for the computer to solve and the result and the computer will be slow it will take more time to give us appropriate results and if we use this very rough mesh the number of equations will be less this computer will solve them relatively quickly we will get better results but of course we will get results quickly but um, we will um, the the quality of the results will um, will not be that good so if I put it in the form of a graph uh, let's say we write mesh quality mesh size uh, and we write here speed of simulation So if the mesh size is smaller, the speed of simulation will be faster. And if the mesh size is, oh, sorry. Let me, so if the mesh size is smaller, the speed of the simulations is slow. But if the mesh size is large, the speed of the simulations is faster so we get this kind of trend 
on the other hand on the other hand this is also interesting now we take this axis as speed of simulation and accuracy now this accuracy graph is opposite so if the mesh size is smaller the accuracy is much higher but if the mesh size is larger the accuracy is much lower so it comes like this so this means that we also want to get adequate accuracy as well as we also want to get adequate speed of simulation so we do not take 20 days to solve a model we want to uh, solve it in within a few hours but we want to get adequate accuracy so there is always a sweet spot which we have to select so the the refinement of the mesh is not affecting the results yet we are getting the results quite quickly that's what we did here that's what we did here so we for the same model for the same model for the same Did you lose my audio? 27. Okay, so seems we are on. We are okay now. Um, so what we did here was we um, again just repeating quickly. What we did here was we uh, in we increase the size of the mesh. We 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 decrease the size of the mesh, and then we saw where the results stop changing. And probably this is something which is available in the next slide with the pointer I cannot see it but with the pen I would be able to <sighs> okay And then here you will see that we uh, collected some results and we wanted to see how um, they are changing. So here with different mesh sizes, uh, with different mesh sizes, so here the mesh size is large, here it is smaller, even smaller, even smaller, we have collected some results. And the color corresponds to the graph and we see that for the green with very large mesh, the results are different on the edges with uh, with relatively finer mesh the results are relatively better and then there is very slight difference when we change that uh, when we change the mesh size from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 so the results are almost same which means that we can use this mesh size so the results will not change yet our simulations will run faster Um, um, a question is, uh, is there a specific method to find out where results stop changing by changing mesh size or just hit and trial? Yes, there are different methods and uh, methodologies and analytical models and tools and techniques to um, check the mesh dependency of a model. So you have to know what are, what are the maximum stresses, where are the where are the stresses in the model which um, w which can be affected by the mesh size so different people have met developed different empirical models and codes where they have already done a lot of simulations and they you can already plug in your data and you can just directly get a, a ballpark idea of um, what could be your mesh size but then it is specifically model and um, parameter and property dependent and then you have to do some of your uh, and calculations on your own as well and that is where hit and trial comes in so hit and trial is not usually wildly hit and trial it is in a very specific area to be more accurate and to, to be more precise if it answers your question um, and the second thing is nowadays we also use another tool of remeshing 
where um, where instead of meshing the whole model as a very fine mesh we just remesh the areas which just which are just more prone to more stresses or where the the results are widely changing and we just want to be more accurate in that area so in that way we do not increase the calculation size significantly calculation time significantly but we increase the accuracy of the results quite significantly so there are different area of ways of tackling it here just i am giving you a glimpse of we did this and we saw these results so our model was um, mesh uh, independent we made our model mesh independent um, then what uh, we did was um, we did calculations for the mu and that is what i asked you to do so if you will um, use um, so these are the calculations which are already done using the formulas which we discussed already uh, we have relatively less time so i will not discuss them here um, what we did was uh, we did calculations and we came to know that um, for our calculation for a specific set what we um, what we wanted to see was um, what is the critical friction coefficient and what we realized what is was 0.62 uh, for um, the process which we wanted to do and it then now you see here we ran two simulations one with friction coefficient of 0 0.61 and one with friction coefficient of 0 0.62 so one just below the critical friction coefficient required one just above the fr critical friction coefficient required and the simulation gives us pretty nice result you can see here so if we choose a friction coefficient below um, the critical friction coefficient we see that the material touches the rollers but then it the rollers continue to slip because they are not able to grab so that so that is basically they were not able to satisfy the grabbing condition so to say and on the other hand if we just slightly increase this value to friction coefficient of 0 0.62 we saw that um, for the same billet for all the same calculations for everything else defined perfectly the same um, just by changing the friction coefficient by 0 0.01 we saw that uh, the grabbing condition was satisfied and then the rolling took place so here you are seeing some of the simulation results um, uh, simulation results in the form of a video which is quite interesting to see um, from now onwards what we will see is we will not see the results in the form of a video because it does not make more sense it is very difficult to process the it is very difficult for our minds to process the pictures quickly frame by frame so what we will do is we will take different pictures at different steps and we will analyze the data in comparison for all the simulations which we did before but what you can do is um, for just for your assignment and understanding you can also um, do these calculations on in the file you already have and then you will also get a better idea on what we are talking about here so far so good any other questions because now I will be quickly moving to uh, Abacus showing you how we define model and how we define things uh, how the simulation is run how do we get results um, I expect to give it almost it is 35 so 10 10 15 minutes and after that we will come back to this uh, lecture and we will see the results of the simulations okay just um, putting in a quick poll so you have been able to follow the story until now so what we are doing how the ruling process goes on and why we want to simulate it and um, yeah where the analytical models lag and why we need finite element simulations and what we will be doing today in the finite element simulations good so most of the students say yes I take it as a positive sign so that's great good to know okay now let's um, start with um, Abacus what I will do here is I will minimize my video as well so we get maximum view so are you able to see the Abacus window on the shared screen super 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 thank you thank you okay so here uh, let me start from a little ahead 
so this is our assembly uh, assembly means we have two rollers and one billet everything has been set up put in the right place um, 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 in such a way that we can run a simulation uh, initially I thought of uh, doing this uh, right in front of you so starting from a very scratch very blank window and doing it all just once but then I realized that there are too many settings and too many controls we need to set and then I cannot remember all those things and I might take some time it is quite easy but it is a very long and difficult um, multi-step process and then I thought yeah it, it's better if I model it pre before class and then just show them here okay so what we have here is uh, the case is 2d um, relatively simple case where we have roller on top roller on bottom and then we have a billet here um, what we do is we define each individually so this is the geometry of a billet this is the geometry of a roller um, we can also go into the details of drawings of what is the size and so on I kept it hello uh, hollow um, uh, deliberately generally in the actual in the actual ruling process it is not hollow it is solid but um, I kept it like this because then it is much easier to mesh and the mesh quality remains quite um, nice and fine um, in, in our case and then we can define the uh, reference points and apply all the boundary conditions and so on but just imagine that this is a roller we are only interested in the outer surface we are not interested in what is inside it so then we define the material as we discussed before here instead of defining copper oh it will go on my other uh, it will go on my other screens okay so we define the density of the material elasticity of the material and plasticity of the material and then we define a section that is something which we discussed in the slides then we assign it uh, then we assign it to the uh, then we assign it to the material which we want to roll the rollers we assume in this simulation are rigid so they will not deform uh, when we assume this condition uh, we do not get any information or results for the rollers but the advantage is that the simulation becomes super fast because then it does not have to calculate all the values for all the points on the rollers so that's an advantage but also a disadvantage advantage is that simulations are faster disadvantage is that um, yeah, disadvantage is that we will not get more information about the rollers but as a simulation um, scientist or a researcher you always have to trade off so what you are more interested in what are the assumptions you can take to uh, to do that and then um, quickly reach the solution assembly is something which we already discussed so we define these instances we define it we place them in the right positions uh, so j just that the billet is touching the surfaces and it is about to be rolled um, then what we do is we define the type of the step so here you will see that oh I have defined um, a dynamic explicit step with time period of five um, it is tricky but I, I cannot explain it here but I've, uh, just uh, time period of five and then the maximum time increment is 0 0.1 so we will get smaller steps so we will get results for several uh, steps here then we define all the necessary um, outputs which we want to get from this simulation model um, and then important part comes in so we define interaction property and here you will see oh I will see <laughs> Uh, here you will see that I have defined a friction uh, uh, a tangential behavior a, a friction coefficient of penalty which means that I can so it is just to, to name it and then the, I have defined the important thing is I have defined a friction coefficient of 0 0.2 which means this is the value of mu which I am taking in this um, simulation this is just an example case our case in the in the slides is slightly different from this one but it is just to show you an example of how things are and then what we do is we define the interaction so um, you can see here that um, an interaction is defined between uh, the roller surface and the billet surface so how they will interact and basically what I've defined is that they will interact in a hard way a separable way um, and uh, uh, the friction coefficient between them will be 0 
and then we separately define the interaction between the upper roller surface and the billet and then we define the same properties to this as well and then here what we have done is we define we have defined this roller as a rigid surface and we have defined this roller as a rigid surface around these reference points which would mean that they will not deform so that's what i am defining here and then we define our boundary conditions and bound by boundary conditions i mean what is the uh, what what are the bounds so i have so what i would want to do is i would want to restrict these rollers to move in any direction uh, and i would want them just to roll in the appropriate directions the top one in the anti clockwise direction the lower one in the clockwise direction and yeah so that's what i've done here sorry So that's what I've done here. And then what we do is we define a job. We ask it to, uh, where did that go? Yeah. So we define a job. Um, we ask it to um, run the simulation using the models and everything which we have selected. And then we run it. I don't know how much time it will take. So I have already run the simulation. The results are complete. So after it is, so after it is complete, we can see the results. And here, so one thing which I which we missed was which we can cover here is the meshing of uh, the system. So here you can see that how I mesh the rollers. This is called gradient meshing, where the element in the middle is smaller, but element in the outside is large, but the aspect ratio, so x by y ratio of all the elements is same. Uh, for the round objects, we want to make this kind of meshing so the results are more homogeneous and they're easier to calculate. And then here you can see the mesh size of the billet which we took. So this is relatively coarse meshing. We will not really use this for actual projects but because then we want relatively more accurate results and um, we will want to spend a little bit more time on calculating all those but here just for the sake of visualization and just for the sake of an example um, I am taking it here and here you will see that what is the mesh size of this and that they don't have to be necessarily the same but if they are same that is very good my rollers were quite big so I opted for this relatively larger mesh size um, and then we have our results in written in the ODB file which we can see here now let's see what we get um, I will increase it step by step so what is happening here is that the um, uh, the billet is going through the rollers you will see here and then it is passing after rolling so initially the thickness was um, so initially the height of the billet was larger the final height of the billet is relatively smaller because it is being rolled um, and if I will click on a point here can I can I can I no I can't I think no I can't I think but um, but the rollers are actually rolling you will see them static here because the step size is such that we the the next mesh is again at the same position so they are not changing quite much but they are rolling as well um, and this is this is the um, stress distribution let me make it a bit larger view code annotation options uh, so uh, 40 applied to on everything okay and uh, okay so now you will be able to read these values as well um, these are the values of miser's stress um, but we can also quickly get results uh, in um, the X direction and Y direction. So if I select one one, so these are the longitudinal stresses which we talked about. And then um, these are the vertical stresses um, or normal stresses which we talked about. And we see that they are, um, the value is compressive in the middle because these two rollers are compressing on this billet and then this is 
deforming from higher thickness to um, the higher height to lower height. We can also get a value of strain. So initially there was no strain in the material here. The strain starts to take place and then it evolves and then it becomes higher. And you can see that in the middle, the profile is not straight. So the strain is the so strain distribution follows this kind of profile and it and it moves. It might be slightly hard for you to um, follow the results. We have been working with these kind of models and these kind of problems for quite some time. It is much easier to see the results, compare them with what we have in our mind and compare quickly with the mind maps and see what is happening. But if you will spend a little bit more time on it, um, if you will spend a little bit more, um, if you will do a little bit of more calculations with hand or understand how this thing is working, you will be able to understand all these trends and ideas. It is not something out of the world. It is just more accurate, precise information from on every node, on every element from about what we already know. So this is just a relatively simple um, formulation. Um, and then we can also see um, the velocities. If we ignore the rollers, we see that the initial velocity is uh, lower here in this range. And um, then uh, there is the velocity of the rollers, which is on the surface to some extent, and then the velocity of the out outer end is higher. And in the meantime, the velocity is increasing. So you can also see that the velocity of the material after deformation is increasing to a certain extent. The deformation of the material. So if I, so basically it is also coloring the rollers because it gets information about them. But if I get u1, which means the deformation in x direction, it won't be too much. But if I get u2, um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, the legend is not showing any information here because the rollers are taking most of the scale. That happens. That happens. That's normal. It's okay. So yeah, you can get uh, you can get these values, and then what we can also do is um, do some post processing. If we want to see results on this point, what we can do is we can start a query. Uh, all my windows are going on the other CPUs. I have, I have to change these settings, but yeah, and then we select a node. And then we select a node and then we and then it gives us information about that node we can also find probe values so probe value works works like a meter where you will see that um, if I will go here anywhere instead of elements I can select nodes so on this node you can see that um, the maze stress on the very end here you will see that the miser stress is a certain value and here it is a certain value and here it is it is relatively less so we can also see the results like this but we want to make more meaning out of these results and that is why we um, plot them on different paths along x direction along y direction um, on different um, areas and then we see the results like that and that is what we want to do now um in the in our it is not closing i don't know why can i close this it is also not closing oh <laughs> it's a mess okay okay so yeah then let's come back to our boring slides again and as we discussed before, so we are using three different um, roller radii. What we discussed in the diagram before, so 20 millimeter, 40 millimeter, and 60 millimeter. And we are using three different reduction ratios, 15%, 30%, and 50%. And these are the outcomes. So these are not the simulation videos but you can see how this looks like when the roll radius is really small and the reduction ratio is quite large this will be the Mises stress distribution and you can see here when the roll radius is large the reduction ratio is small let me do use this and you can see here that
when um, the roller radius is large and the reduction ratio is small, you will see here that the stresses are relatively lower. So they are around 236, 260 MPa. But if when the roller radius is relatively small and the reduction ratio is very large, then the stresses are quite high and concentrated in a very small area during rolling. And you can see here that the values are reaching up to 315 MPa. Okay, so you see that how the stress distribution is different when we are selecting different attributes and they, these kind of stress distributions affect the final microstructure, final properties, final behavior of the material after rolling. So that is important. That is why we want to, um, that is why we want to uh, model it and study it and make sure that we are using the correct values. Now what we did was, instead of just showing pictures because it is very difficult to compare red color from red color what we did was um, we um, extracted um, results on certain path which you can see here in the blue line which you can see here in the blue line so the it is starting from the lower roller it is going up to the uh, top roller and we extracted these results right in the middle of the um, of the rolling process so we try to do it at a neutral point and then you see here that how the stresses in this area from bottom to top evolve so if the um, starting from here we see that the stresses are relatively lower on the surface so they get higher and then in the middle they again drop and then they get higher and when we increase the roll radius they drop less so you see that here now here the the point of understanding and um, understanding the graphs also comes in handy um, but, but just quickly encompassing this and then I will come to a question of if the reduction ratio is increased to 30% we see that there is very less drop here and if it is increased to 50% there is no drop here so the stresses on the surface and in the middle and on the top surfaces always are higher and that is basically the limit of the material um, what I would like to ask in a quick question is, are you able to understand these graphs and how the trend is evolving when we are increasing the radius um, and when we are increasing the reduction ratio? And if you say no, I would like to ask you to write in public chat or in private chat your question or your issue or your problem so I can help you with it. To understand it better to do it because otherwise I don't know why there is a this difficulty or barrier because in the next presentation so after this slide we will see a lot of graphs so if this is not clarified here you will have difficulty following the lecture later as well and here I am waiting for your comments if you say that you are not able to follow the graphs, I would like to know why, so I can help you with it. No comments. Anyways, you have time whenever you are feeling okay or you have um, written down a question I will be happy to answer it the screen is right in front of me okay now what we did was <coughs> we also wanted to see the residual stresses so the stresses in the middle area so there there are two areas which we identified it is interesting uh, let me use which color let's use I don't know all the colors I use there let's use purple okay so initially we measured results here but then 
we wanted to find out the residual stresses. So the residual stresses are the stresses which which remain in the material after rolling. So now the material is not going through the rolls. It has already rolled, but these are the stresses which will retain. So which will remain in the material due to permanent deformation, due to the plastic deformation. And then we wanted to see how how what is the effect of roller radius and uh, and reduction ratio on it and then we see okay and, and what i also want to inform is that generally generally uh, the lower um, the residual stresses the better the process was so we want to lower the amount of residual stresses um, in, in in the material dur during a process um, uh, so the load bearing capacity of the material is relatively more. It is it is tricky, but generally that is what we want to do. Um, and here you will see that when the reduction ratio is increasing, the amount of re residual stress. So this was this here, and then this is this here, and then this is higher here. So you see that there is a significant increase in the um, in the uh, residual stresses uh, after rolling if we increase the reduction ratio and especially for the smaller radius hmm? the the green line so that's what you will see here um, so this is also some information which we were able to collect from our simulation results now we want to see um, the uh, normal stresses and longitudinal stresses and what we and the amount of strain that we did was instead of comparing all the simulations we only compared these three um, simulations with 50% reduction with 30% reduction and 20% radius and then these so the results could be slightly less and that's what we see here sorry and that's what we see here so when the roll radius is 20 millimeters for 15 percent reduction and for 30 percent reduction this means that here the reduction is higher we see that from the surface towards the middle hmm, so 10 millimeter so 0 millimeter basically means on the surface here this path here on the surface and 10 millimeters means the same path in the middle. So we took different paths on this line, 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 and then we plotted the results. And we see that one means along the horizontal direction is how that is changing, and we see the trends. So on the surface, it is much higher, and as we go down, it, it gets lower and lower and lower. And then we see this area here, which it tips and then breaks down. This is basically the neutral point. So here, the, um, the value of the stress is high. And then we see that the neutral point is not really neutral. So it is not a straight line. It is a line something like this, uh, which is um, uh, which is acting on the material and then if and then if, if we increase the reduction we see that the the stresses in the middle and stresses on the top are almost the same reach the same point but the curvatures to reach them are slightly different and if we increase the roll radius to 60 millimeters and then the reduction ratio is 30 we see that um, on on the surface uh, the material is more um, the, the material is more deformed um, so yeah, these are the results which we obtained uh, from um, um, on, on in the in the horizontal direction. And if you will look at these results, and if you will look at this uh, graph here, which was calculated using analytical uh, analytical models, you will see a similarity and a difference. So here you will see that these are very smooth lines going up all going up and then reaching a higher point in the middle and then all going down whereas if we run a simulation or an actual experiment it is never the case we see the trend is same 
so all the lines are going up they're reaching a point and then they're going down hmm? but uh, they're not following a very straight line or very straight path and that is also what happens in our actual material so that is how the analytical models can give us some information but are slightly generalized because they are um, because they have several assumptions in the model um, and then um, effect of roll radius and reduction issues on longitudinal stress and longitudinal stress means stress in x direction um, and then we see how this trend is happening there is almost no longitudinal stress in the case of um, in the case of larger roll radius and very less reduction ratio but there is very high um, longitudinal stress um, in the case of a larger reduction ratio and smaller roll radius so it is also of and and it is quite high on the surface it is negative in the middle and that is how it um, um, our results are and then I think what we did was we also um, plotted the results at, at, at this point and then we see that um, how these values are changing with different reduction ratios and different roller radii okay um, and then what we also did was we um, uh, we plotted um, the curves on the same um, on, 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 on the same lines which we discussed before um, and then we tried to find the neutral line here but um, as you will see in the in the previous slide so if I go back to that slide where it was here so you will see here that um, uh, the longitudinal stresses are increasing to a certain limit and then dropping um, I think the previous was normal stress along the horizontal direction so that was Mises and then if we see the normal stress we see that yes we see that it is increasing yes we see that it is increasing and then reaching a certain point and then dropping but it is not always the same so we see that um, it is on the surface it is very different it is completely following a different path but right below the surface it starts to follow that trend and when we go in the middle the trend becomes relatively more appropriate and okay so yeah and then we also see the equivalent plastic strain so the amount of plastic strain um, uh, in the material uh, in the last lecture what we did was we calculated it so the average amount of strain and in in that case the analytical model it would just give us one value but here we see that it is not homogeneous so on the surface the strain is relatively higher and in the middle the strain is relatively lower here you will see that on the surface the strain is higher and in the middle the value is relatively lower and here it is almost every, everything is almost strained but here you will see that only the surface is strained and yet the material in the middle is not even strained at all so very less strain we also plotted these results and we see that when the reduction ratio is higher uh, and when the roll radius is uh, smaller um, the lines um, the overall equivalent strain tends to go up so this would mean that here the relative strain is lower it is in the middle and it is in the higher you can see all these lines the trends so this is increasing and this is further increasing so that's quite um, interesting and then we also plotted these on these curves and we saw that the um, the higher the roll radius and the more the reduction ratio the higher the equivalent plastic strain was and in the middle is relatively lower but on the surface it is much much higher that is also something which you see in the trends um, um, then we see the shear stresses so we see two blips um, a high shear and a low shear during deformation which is relatively more distributed and when the roller radius is higher and the reduction ratio is higher but it is more pronounced when the roll radius is small and the reduction ratio is lower so they also um, quite drastically affect the outcome we also plotted them uh, saw different results but um, yeah um, uh, the normal stresses how they are evolving and then here we see the effect of velocities 
um, the velocity um, for example when the roll radius is quite uh, small uh, and the reduction ratio is large um, uh, we see that the uh, we see that the velocity of the material before roller and velocity of the material after roller is very different um, when the roll radius is large but when roll radius is small it is the difference is slightly less and then what we did was we also analyzed it um, uh, quantitatively so here you see that we plotted the results on this path where um, this uh, line shows the velocity of the roller the velocity of the material before entering the roller is low and after it passes through the roller it the velocity of the material increases so it is higher than that line and as the reduction ratio increases the, this gap increases so we can see it in both cases and when the roll radius is smaller roll radius is large this gap is much bigger and when the roll radius is um, small this gap is smaller and then what we also do is we also see the effect of um, uh, force uh, in this uh, document so we see that the force is increasing going up and um, coming down let me show you the previous analytical results from another slide which we um, saw here so we see that the force increases and then it reaches a certain point let me remove this and then start again so we see that the roll uh, the speed of um, the force increases reaches a certain point and then it drops uh, so these are the analytical results and with the reduction ratio increasing of the reduction ratio this is this increases and when we look at our simulation results in this file um, in this slide we see that the force is increasing reaching a certain point and then dropping again so the trend is same and for 50 percent reduction so high reduction ratio um, the value is um, much higher but the trend is generally the same 